I think he's in a good place. He's he's been doing his job for a while now, and he knows you know what to do, and he he just does his thing. By that, you know, he he has his orders and whatnot, but he he's confident in his ability and what he does and the way he goes about things. He doesn't think twice, he goes on his on his instincts and Yeah, he he's he's in a good place. I would say yes. I it's got all, all the elements are there. I mean he it starts off you know, and he's got his little task that he has to do and get that hard drive back. Doesn't always go to plan. Um, the title sequence has a fantastic song uh, by Tren called Ghost. Um, and, you know, the title sequence it, it's, it's there. It's fantastic uh, graphics. The, all the MI6 regulars uh, are still there, plus we now have the addition of uh, Money Penny. Um, so that's all there. You have two, on, a, on average most of these films have two Bond girls, and we have um, two fantastic uh, girls playing those roles. We've got a batshit crazy villain. Uh, henchmen, the cars are there, um, the gadgets, everything. So it's it's a classic Bond film, to me anyway. <laughs> they're they're both uh, fantastic, uh, both in 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 their own unique ways. I think these. Two girls bring uh, two very different characters uh, to 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 the screen, and they both do exceptionally well. And they're both beautiful girls in their in in their own right. So uh, I think casting Brianna and Sophia um, was one of the best things about this about this film. I had Brianna um, sort of. I had her cast for a long time. She she was um, cast quite early on in the process, and I always had in my mind if there was someone that was going to play this role, it would be her, um, because of her, you know, striking presence on screen and um, the way that uh, she she brings herself to the film and, and portrays herself in, in, in those characters. And Sophia came along quite late actually. I had a lot of trouble casting, well not trouble, just it took a long time to uh, cast Miss Watson uh, for various reasons and I, I'm kind of, I don't know why I didn't think of her sooner because I, you know, going through all the people I know and it just she just never came up in my mind, and then I, I don't know I saw something, like a Facebook post or Instagram or something one day that she'd made, and I think, ah, oh, why didn't I think of her before? So, yeah, it was just a stroke of luck, and of course the the fact that both of them, uh, were so eager and excited to to get involved, and, uh, not um be concerned by, um, you know, what they'd have to uh, do on, on screen um, was just fantastic and I think they're both uh, amazing women. Well, a Bond film is only as good as its villain, so that's why I think Chrome is a, is a, is a, is a good film. Um, he starts off, well, when we first see him, you don't know that he's bad. You might have a, some people viewing it may have predicted it as soon as he walked on screen. Others gone totally over their head, so it's uh, each to their own. But, 
you know, when we first meet Lionel Hawksworth, he's just a casual office worker um, working for, for, well, not office worker, but, you know, he, he works he works with the government, works with MI6, and just a regular guy. And then when we next see him, he's, you know, or we don't, we don't actually see him, but we hear his voice, uh, and it's altered. And we realise, okay, so this villain uh, has some kind of scary plan. Um, and he's obviously got world domination on his mind. It's such a stereotype. Um, but then, but he has layers to him. And that's the brilliant thing, is this character grows from just being, you know, easygoing. Uh, and by the end of the film, he is just out of his mind crazy and driven by his own goals and he's he's desperate uh, for his plan to succeed you know if something you know if the, if he encounters a bump in the road you know no matter we just I just keep going and doing my thing and the way James was able to convey that on screen is is uh, amazing it's it's really um, really quite fantastic in what he was able to do and I'm just so pleased that he was um, he was part of it. I remember the day that we premiered uh, the third film, Solace of a Frame, um, and we were all sort of having, you know, eats, I think it was pizza or whatever, outside um, afterwards and you know everyone was sort of coming up to me you know well done Paul you know enjoyed the film blah 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 uh, and Riley Burke came up to me and he said um, if you ever need a big ass henchman in one of your films hit me up because I'd love to be a part of it and this was uh, November Early, early November or late October of 2015. So Spectre, the 24th official Bond film, was just about to be released. Um, and, of course, uh, Dave Bautista, former WWE uh, wrestler, who's now an actor, um, was uh, Mr. Hinks in that film. And he's a big, muscly henchman. And so in my mind, I just saw Riley as sort of my version of, of Dave Bautista, in that he's a big-ass henchman. And I just said to him, absolutely, next film, we'll get you on, we'll sign you up, uh, I'll, make this ca I'll make a character, and you're in. So I think Riley had been cast for, <laughs> for about, uh, how, how long was it? It must have been over, oh, well, over 24 months from when we started filming uh, to after then so yeah apart from me he was um, he was pretty much the first person to be confirmed in the in the film and he's just fantastic I mean these 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 henchmen you know they don't have to say a lot of lines but in the lines that he does have you know he he worked on getting an accent you know Eastern European accent right um, which was really fantastic that he had that kind of dedication to the role and the rest of the stuff um you know the fights the um chases um he just he always he, there were times where we do a scene uh or you know do a take and I was like yeah okay it looks good and he's like no 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 no, no I, I wasn't right I want to do that again so the way he applied himself and worked so hard on screen was uh, just, f it boosts the the whole cast and crew when somebody like that comes along and they try to push themselves to get everything right. And you know, he, he did amazing in that. And of course the... When we did the the fight scenes, he was you know he was, he was in the zone. He was he, he was kind of funny because he he was always trying to get himself angry. He was like he said, "Come on, Paul, make me angry." Uh, so it was 
that was that, and that was fantastic to work across from on screen because it just makes everything that little bit more real. I'm you know very when I'm on set I'm always very relaxed, but he was he was so focused and so applied that what he brought to the film is just you can't put a price on that. All four of them are really great people, uh, and you know, for Kian, Tom, and Chris, MQ, and Tanner, they've all been around for a while, and they've uh, grown into into their characters. So I'm, you know, you're no longer just seeing, you know, you're not just seeing Tom, or you're not just seeing Chris on screen. You're seeing Q. You're seeing. Bill Tanner, you know, you, they've grown into those characters and they, you know, for them now it's, it's not so much um, of a trouble to, to, to do it because they, you know, they, they feel confident in themselves and that is demonstrated on screen, you know, they've all, all our acting skills have improved in the last four or five years that we've been doing this, so they're, they're really great. And of course we now have uh, Natasha Berthold as uh, Miss Moneypenny. And she just, she just dived headfirst in and she did such a great job, you know, she's so articulate and she, you know, she'd done a bit of acting before and she does film, so she, she knew what was required of her and she, you know, one of those people that you can just give minimal instructions and direction to and they just they just go and do it without, without a problem, uh, and Natasha is one of those. So the fact that she joined the cast is, um, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and I'm just so lucky that all four of them uh, uh, did such a great job in this film. It's incredibly humbling, um, you know. This isn't for for school, or university. Uh, it's. I'm making it just because I can, and um, there's so much um, preparation and planning that you need to do for something like this, particularly when, like me, you, you do about 90-95% 90, 90, of it, um, and to have the support that I've had both from friends, family, and the general public is you can't you can't put a price on it, and it, it makes me feel that what I'm doing is not just for me, but everyone else wants me to me and uh, you know the, the the cast and crew to to make something great and. It makes you so happy, you know, when you walk onto set and everyone, you know, wants to, you know, do their best and they can't wait to see the final product and, you know, they ask questions, so it's, it's a fantastic thing. And even just, you know, when people I know ask me in the street, you know, when's the, when's the film coming out, things like that, uh, the fact that people want to see it and have a genuine interest and have a genuine wish to see it succeed it it's it's an amazing amazing feeling it it does take a toll um, you know the, the from the mental side of it the writing script writing for 12 plus months um, then you have to plan each and every take you know, shots, it, I, it's difficult, it, it's difficult, you know, applying the music and the background, the research process, you know, where you can shoot, how you can shoot something, what's possible, what's not, then you do the editing and the, the animating and, you know, organizing, um, shooting days and things like that, and to have every little piece of information going through your head <laughs> days where it hurts uh, and then of course physically you know you 
with a, a role such as James Bond, you, you expect a bit of wear and tear. And, you know, when you do fights, you know, running, jumping, you know, throwing yourself onto hard concrete, things like that, you know, the days where you do get injured, I got, I got injured a couple of times on, on this film, uh, mostly by Riley. Uh, it's not a, that's not a, that's not a jab at Riley at all. I mean, you know, everything was, was done in probably the safest way possible, but, um, you know, it just, it just, accidents happen and um, there was one you know, after in the scene where uh, Bond and Lumiere are in, in bed and then they hear a noise outside so Bond goes out to uh, check what it is and he goes into the corridor and then he opens up a door uh, and Spready bursts out the door and like charges at Bond, pushes him back against the wall uh, we practiced that in slow motion, and the idea was that um, when Riley would come at me, his shoulder would be around uh, the stomach area. So it's all just, it, it's all muscle, there's no bone. And we rehearsed it a couple of times and it went well. Um, but then when we did the take, just because you have to do it just that little bit quicker, you know, it's got to go quick and. Um, when Riley came out, his shoulder went straight into my ribs, and he's a big man, and it's a hard brick wall, and when you jammed between the two of them, it hurts, so I swear I felt one of my ribs, you know, just go, yeah, there was, there was no, there was no crack or, or fracture, thank God, but, um, it was bruised for a for a week, you know, and uh, and we still had more stuff that we had to film. I mean, that was the first sort of fight move in a whole sequence. Uh, so I was doing the rest of it like, yeah, I'm okay, and you know, inside you're just screaming. Um, so th that was that was a tough day at the office. Um, the other one we did, I got a nice gash across the, my back um, from being shunted against. Uh, like a, a a cabinet or something, but by Riley in uh, M's office for the for the final scene, and I had um, I had fake blood all across the front of the shirt, and I had little tiny little drops of blood on the back of the shirt, which were real, <laughs> since my back had this you know this nice clean cut. It wasn't too bad, but you know it. We didn't feel it. I didn't what. Well, we, I, I didn't feel it for for a time, and then feel a bit stiff, and you know, touched it. It's a bit sensitive, and I said, "Hey guys, can you just check?" I pulled up the back of my shirt and turned around, and they're like, "Ah!" Oh. So that was that was nice. It does take its toll, but you do it for the final product. Favorite line from the film, which certainly wasn't. Bond, James Bond. I hate that line simply because you overthink it. Um, you know, Sean Connery comes into your head, Roger Moore, Daniel Craig, you know, you think, how can I say this? And, you, you know, you get nervous and um, you totally lose concentration. The first time I did it, I stuffed it up because uh, I think I had, a nice, I had a nice voice crack, I think it was, something like that in the first take and I was just like, no. Nah, Cancel the film, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> um, I think the, the the lines in the scene with um, Q and Bond, when Q brings the gadgets over in Q Lab, I love that, that whole scene uh, from start to finish, you know. But um, just the, the, the one-liners... Uh, like, you know, oh, it's, it's very good at telling the time, you know, talking about the watch and, you know, it's a remarkable feat of engineering. So, um, the, the little one-liners, I probably couldn't pick a favourite, but you, you get the idea. Oh, um, I love... Uh, watching Doctor Who, 
Uh, so I'd love to play the Doctor. That would be a fantastic character because he has a combination of, you know, the greatest hero sort of complexion to him. You know, he's got grand speeches and things like that. And he's also uh, just the times where he just com plays a complete idiot. Um, you know, the, the, whether it's stupidity or insensitivity. Uh, so there's so many layers to this character. Um, which, to, to explore that, would, would be fun. And I get a sonic screwdriver, so that'd be fun.